you change the subject or the general is changing the subject, this entire report does not include one positive argument of why this should be done. That is its primary flaw. All it talks about is mitigating problems. There was a phony argument that was raised, something about the courts will have to, um, or the Congress will have to work so the courts don't. Uh, the reason that's a phony argument is because a rogue ruling in San Diego is under appeal. The Supreme Court will overturn it. The courts do not have the, the power to mm -hmm. run the military, but if Congress acts prematurely, that precedent will stand, making let's, let's all kinds positives. of problems let's talk positives. with the military. So, this is the case that well, you brought to court. There, there you are, got a judge to say that she should be the supreme judicial commander of the I military. I prefer the legislative it's process. Ridiculous. That's actually ideal. Congress, Congress born this thing. They should kill the darn yeah, thing. Yeah, but you so let's don't. Let's talk about you positives. Like Congress let's and let's say talk a judge about positives, Elaine. First. For starters, there are people who have, who've abused this statute to get out of their military commitments. They're there's nothing that ticks sure. me off more as a combat veteran, a current serving officer, someone to try to get out of their commitment. It's a bunch of BS. And people have used Don't Ask, Don't Tell after being paid for medical school training or law school training and saying, oh, you know what, by the way, sir, ma'am, I'm gay. And then they're they trying to get... They were not eligible to be in the service that's, that's and they BS. should not have been So that's another, that's a positive. We, we removed yeah. that. We that's also removed the threat or specter of discharge. The should have been enforced as well, Congress that's Bill Clinton's invention okay. and you know that, Chuck. Okay. Most we of do us not don't support Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Never have. They say gays should not be serving in the That's military That's what the at law all. says. Well, they have been since the 16 since the 1630s before where there was even the United States when we had when we were when we had a home guard the here. The Pentagon so. encourages dishonesty, but that's not the fault of the law. Wow. What we should be talking about the lesbian, statement. gay, bisexual, transgender law that what you are advocating there is nothing in the report about the effects of zero tolerance. Okay. It would force people out of the military. I want, um, I want to, I want to uh, raise what Admiral Mullen has said, because okay. the idea yeah. of lying and compromising your integrity yeah. is what's really motivating him, as well or as many other issues. Or security. Oh, Let me it's raise what he said. Pentagon. Because I think it, uh, it belies us as an institution. We value integrity as an institution. You mean forcing them to lie about what they and are. Then, and then asking uh, individuals to come in and lie about who they are every day uh, ca goes counter to who we are as an institution. He knows better than that. What? Because the law does not say that people can be in the military well, let, let me go. if they are less than honest. He knows that. Well, let me Perhaps ask Stacy Vasquez, uh, private first class, former U.S. Uh, Army sergeant, sergeant rather, first class. Stacy, uh, you had to lie in order to serve, and you were thrown out when you were outed. Yes, I was. I actually joined the Army right after high school, and every generation of men in my family had served in some conflict, and their service inspired me to go into the Army. While I was serving for 12 years, I was promoted seven times. I was inducted into the Sergeant Audie Murphy Club, and I was the top recruiter in the entire Army. I had the misfortune of being outed to my commander by a disgruntled wife. And um, in my discharge paperwork that my commander wrote and signed, I'll actually read you a short ex excerpt and it says that um, Sergeant Vasquez's record is exceptional. She continues to demonstrate professionalism and dedication to all of the soldiers that, that should be emulated. Was there any unit uh, cohesion problems when you were, when we, you, you were serving? I'm fairly certain that the Army wouldn't have promoted me seven times <laughs> and awarded me dozens of decorations if there was a problem with me in unit cohesion. Okay, I want to ask uh, General Clark in a second about mm -hmm. leadership, but first I want to go to uh, the issue of gays serving openly in some 35 or more countries sure. around the world, sure. including U.S. allies, countries like Britain, yeah, which have that. stood and fought with right. the United States and continue to do so. In uh, England, it was in 2000 uh, that, the, uh, that the ban on homosexuals serving in the military was lifted, and it was actually done by the European Court of Human mm -hmm. Rights. Here's Jim Shuto. Patrick Lister Todd was a lieutenant commander in the British Royal Navy and gay at a time when homosexuality was still a criminal offense, punishable by imprisonment. For me, I, I evolved a, a Jekyll and Hyde existence. Still a difficult and fearful, it sounds like, existence. It was difficult. I Coming say, out yeah, or well, being I, I, outed I, I, meant dismissal. Lister Todd chose to leave voluntarily in 1992. Pressured by activist groups and dismissed service members, the military explored integration. But a 1996 Homosexuality Policy Assessment Team report found deep hostility in the ranks. 91% believed homosexual behavior was offensive. 95% said integration would hurt service standards. 
The report concluded there is a military risk from a policy change. We must, quote, deal with the world as it is. Admiral Alan West was convinced the military simply wasn't ready for them to serve openly. I mean, I now find it amazing that back there in the 1990s, I could have thought that mm, this is probably too much to do and that I was willing to accept a status quo which was so wrong, and I was. When the ban was lifted in 2000 with virtually no preparation, something remarkable happened. Nothing. No resignations, no impairment of fighting ability, and almost no incidents of harassment. Some homophobic politicians and service chiefs played up and exaggerated the likely dire consequences of allowing gays to serve. But that was because they were against homosexuality. But when the ban was lifted, their fears did not materialize. Gay service members were quickly given all of the benefits available to other soldiers and sailors, including shared quarters with their partners in barracks like this one. In fact, gay campaigners say that the military quickly became one of the most tolerant organizations in the country. Today, in a sign of just how far things have come, the military even recruits at gay pride parades. So if nothing happened, why do you think it took the British military so long then to do it? We are a reflection of the society we live in, and we should be because we are protecting and defending it, but we are always slightly behind it in getting there. For this week, Jim Shudo, ABC News, London. So one of the things that he mentioned into Alia was <clears> that against it was because people were against homosexuality. That's your position regarding gays serving in the Our military, correct? Our position is military readiness should come first. Well, well we've just been yeah. talking about military re readiness. Yeah. So what is really the position? Well, yeah. this particular piece that you just showed on uh, milita foreign militaries, I work with foreign militaries every day, still do, and have for many years. Um, you know, it's, the U.S. military is about 18 times larger than the Brits. You know, to compare them to, uh, it, you know, to us is like comparing a M1A1 tank the to a Roman chariot. The, the, the issues are fundamentally about privacy, about unit cohesion, about trust and confidence, about readiness, about, you know, retention, you know, recruitment. You look at all those. Unfortunately, Christian, the, the report that the Pentagon came out with based upon a fall, flawed survey, doesn't support that if you look at how they did the process. And unfortunately, unless Congress does the right thing for the nation, you know, we're going to depend upon some pretty bad <clears throat> research that scientists are going to disagree with. Is it about morality or is it about combat effectiveness? Uh, one exactly historian right. has said the idea of unit cohesion was the only thing they could come up with, but it was based on very little. Nothing will be good enough for the opponents who do not want to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell. It's not about the evidence, it's about the ideology. They're saying, oh, you, you can't compare the U.S. military to other militaries. We're bigger, we're in war, et cetera, et cetera. But then they simultaneously want to say we have the most professional forces in the world, which we do. But how do you answer, how do you sure. answer concerns by people who think that if this is repealed, suddenly there'll be an onslaught of openly gay behavior, sure. the showers, the bunks, sure. all the things that people who don't like this. Don't put words in our mouths. Uh, yes. you know, in general, the report says there will be no separation. The report says that, yes. Well, the Joint Chief said no, no separation. Of the but let's go back to combat readiness. I'll Absolutely. tell you one of the things that I don't hear, I hear about combat readiness. You know where I need help? You know where Captain Cooper needs help? I need more ammo. We have, we have, there are shortages on ammo for troop training. We need training, training and is part of readiness. Right. And having been fully equipped is part <clears throat> of readiness Absolutely. and effectiveness. That's readiness and effectiveness. Mm -hmm. This is a burden, as a, it's a personnel nightmare for commanders. They'd rather not deal with this. Get rid of this. Clear but the decks of the statute. But why is your organization in court at war against the U.S. military? Is this no, going to happen through the courts or through legislation? Is this going to happen through the courts or through legislation? My hope is that it happens through legislation as Secretary Gates and the number one and number <clears> two <throat> commanding men in the armed forces said they can do this they can do this without impacting military readiness so long commanders. as they yeah, have they the time to do so yes. you well, only General have is a commander and i want to he ask was. him what <laughs> once in the army once a commander always a commander that's I thought. exactly right uh yeah, general clark that. the the secretary of defense the chairman of the joint chiefs has said the one thing it's going to require is leadership and training yeah. to implement yeah. this if it is repealed what precisely does that mean? What that means is not trying to make broad rulings, but 
if there are issues that you deal with them at the lowest possible level. Right. Look, there are troops who don't get along because they don't like each other's music. There are troops who don't get along <laughs> because they play different sports in barracks. But when you put them in the field and you work together, generally they do get along. It's the job of the non-commissioned officer, the junior officers, to handle these kinds mm -hmm. of personal yeah, issues. And I think the, the bottom line of this is that the society has moved on. The, despite what General Amos says, that the, even people in the Marines understand that this is, this, the attitudes that were uh, against bringing gays into the military, those are the old attitudes. Society's moving on. Um, the, the Army and the rest of the services should reflect the society that they're protecting. And the people in the services are willing to do it. So well, I think what we need no, to do not. is <laughs> take the military out of the crosshairs of the culture wars. Let this policy be decided and give the men and women who are leading the armed forces the opportunity to do their job, get the policy implemented. General Clark, all of you, thank you very much indeed for thank joining you. us. Unfortunately, we're out of time. There will be more opportunities to discuss this and particularly to talk about all sides.